So if you've been watching the previous videos in this playlist, uh, you'll know I've been building this uh, IP engineering 16mm scale chassis. Um, it's now to the point where it's all painted, assembled, um, and, but in this video I want to talk about um, one of the problems I had um, and how I've overcome that. Specifically, if we look at the instructions, um, the chassis is described as being a deluxe heavy duty dual gauge chassis. Um, which is exactly what I wanted because I didn't wasn't sure whether I wanted to build this to um, 32 millimeter gauge or 45 millimeter gauge. Um, the problem comes when you start reading the instructions. Specifically, when you um, start assembling the wheels, you'll find that there are two sets of instructions depending on whether you're assembling for uh, 45 millimeter gauge or 32 millimeter gauge. Specifically, this little um, insulated bush uh, that fits in the centre of the wheel and that uh, that holds the retaining uh, screw to keep it on the axle um, is fitted from the outside uh, for 32mm gauge and from the inside of the wheel for 45mm gauge. Now that seems a bit weird for a, a dual gauge chassis because obviously my understanding of dual gauge chassis would that I'd be, be able to not just build it to one or the other gauges but change it from one to the other kind of at whim. Um, so if we have a look at the chassis itself, it, well it's assembled here, I've got it set for 45mm gauge and as you can see there is um, very little space between the outer faces of the wheel uh, and the chassis side um, and if I get it to the right angle you can see that there's very very little space and it's quite clear that this thicker um, side of the of the bush wouldn't fit between the wheel um, and the and the chassis side. So that's assembled and that, that works fine for 45mm gauge, there's no, there's no problem there. Um, the problem is that if I want to um, adjust this for 32mm gauge, then um, for the undriven axle there's no problem. I can slide those wheels in um, without any, any issue at all, um, there's nothing to get in the way of moving those even though they've been assembled um, according to the 45mm instructions. The problem though is on this other wheel set. Um, as you can see there's very very little um, clearance um, at the back here between these insulated bushes uh, and the gearbox um, <clears throat> and specifically um, the grub screws um, on the on the wheels stick out from the the bushes um, so if you slide them in in the original configuration when I built this um, with the wheels set for, built for 45 millimeter gauge if you slide them in uh, the grub screws um, are the first problem because they just lock solid against the gearbox. Um, so the first modification I've made is to file the grub screws down um, as far as necessary so that when they're tightened up they're inside, just about inside the, the bush um, so that they can rotate clearly um, against the uh, up against the gearbox. Um, <clears throat> the other problem though is that the gearbox isn't symmetrical um, <clears throat> so as you can see, uh, it's wider on this side uh, with this extra extra protuberance, um, and the back-to-back -back measurement needs to be 29 millimeters. The motor itself and the gearbox here is uh, 28 millimeters, uh, but with this offset uh, and this not being symmetrical, you can't actually get the wheels close enough together because this wheel can't get far enough across um, to be. 29 millimeters from this one when this one's pushed in as far as it'll go up against the gearbox. Um, so the other modification I've had to make is to thin this bearing, the lip on this bearing down. Um, you can just about kind of see it here and in, in the in here. Um, it's a little thinner on the lip than the one on the the other side, um, and that allows me to get this bushing just that extra little bit closer uh, to the. Um, to this to this axle bush and allows me to set the the gauge correctly. So I'm just going to do that um, now. So the uh, original uh, wheels, the front, the undriven wheels, still use the Allen key for um, tightening the grub screw. So let me just set this up. Uh, I've got this handy little laser cut spacer. Um, so you can see that's nicely nicely positioned. Uh, I'm not going to be too pre precise on this front axle, but you can see that that's reasonably nice and easy to set. Let me get that other grub screw done. So that's that one uh, set, which much narrower obviously. Now if we do the other one, obviously I have to use a screwdriver for this one because as I said I've had to, um, I've, I've kind of destroyed unfortunately the Allen hole key, so I've, I've, I've worn, I've um, 
cut a small groove in the surface of the of the grub screw so that um, I can use a normal screwdriver. So now um, I can work these wheels in. Uh, <clears throat> you can see this wheel is almost touching the gearbox. Oh, there's a motor on the gearbox, but nowhere near uh, touching the the bearing here. Whereas this one, if I wind this one in, um, it's now touching this this bearing on the gearbox and nearly touching the motor. But if we check with the gauge, you can see we're perfectly um, we're perfectly in the uh, the right back to back now. So I can go ahead and um, tighten these up. Let me rotate this one so I can get to the screw. <coughs> I need to go back and work these screw the cut in the top a little bit better because it's a bit uh, still a bit uh, not not great for a screwdriver. Uh, anyway, so that's now <coughs> changed over to the to the 32 millimeter gauge, and as I say, you can see that really clearances are really really narrow, uh, really fine. There's very little clearance at all at the back of the the wheels um, against the motor, and as I say, um, when you look at this side here. The, the bushing and the bearing are pretty much touching, whereas on this side uh, they're not. So I could probably do with filing that bearing down just that little bit more um, to give it a little bit more bit more clearance there so it doesn't actually wear the bushing away. But for now that's uh, that's set up nicely. So I'm just going to show you that it does actually run at 32mm um, at gauge. I'm just going to put it on these, um, these blocks so that I've got something to sit it on. Um, and we'll, we'll just give it some power. I'm just using a couple of uh, couple of AAA batteries so there's there's three volts of power. There's nothing nothing much going on there. I haven't got it wired into all the control um, stuff yet so you'll just have to watch with the battery. Oops. So there you go you can see that it's running running nicely. Um, running nice and smooth um, but as I say there's there's very little clearance so um, yeah it was impossible to assemble to, to both gauges um, to start with um, I was a little annoyed by that but it's turned out you know in the end quite easy to fix um, altering two grub screws and thinning the, the bearing down has given me that just that enough room um, to uh, to get it to work and as I say it's, it's now nice and easy to change between the, the two the two um, the two gauges so I'm quite happy with that now. Um, obviously, it will uh, will sit probably in a box until I eventually get around to building the body for it, uh, which is the the Shelley Tram Loco, um, also from IP Engineering. Uh, but I'm I'm quite happy with this now. It's, as I say, it's a, it's a bit of a bit misleading uh, title for the for the kit, um, being dual gauge when strictly I don't think it is straight out of the box. Um, but it's a it's a nice easy to build chassis, and I think it's gonna it's gonna be really good under the under the kit under the tram body.